Hi, Megan Campion from Education Elements. I wanna just pose a theory that I don't think it's terribly controversial to say. 2020 is probably gonna go down in history as one of the most disruptive years in modern times. Stick around to explore the way that different school leaders and district leaders from across the country were able to innovate to meet the needs of this chaotic year. Welcome to our first New School Rules episode. My name is Megan Campion, and I have been a teacher, a school administrator, and an education consultant. I work with Education Elements, and we work with school districts across the country to implement responsive practices. And I am so excited to kick off this series and dive into our first New School Rule. Make sure to subscribe so you get notified when our next video, which will address the second new school rule, teaming, building trust, and allowing authority to spread, is up. In 2018, Anthony Kim and Alexis Gonzalez Black published a book called The New School Rules, in which they took the lessons learned by innovators in different industries and applied them to a K-12 context. Two years later, these rules were embraced by schools and districts across the country by necessity. The lessons learned by districts as they responded to the unforeseeable challenges presented in 2020 are guideposts for planning for the future. We're gonna be talking to leaders from different education organizations across the country about what they've learned going through this process, how they've grown, and what they think comes next. In this video, we're going to be talking about the first rule, which is plan for change, not perfection. We'll be talking about three components that came into play as people employed this rule. The first was acknowledging the novelty of the situation. The second is embracing risk. And the third is keeping the work moving forward. Let's dive into idea number one, acknowledging the novelty of a situation and framing challenges as a learning problem. We spoke with Dr. Mary Young, superintendent of Warren County Schools in North Carolina. Carolina, and Kim Moritz, superintendent of Springville Griffith Institute Central School District in New York. They shared with us the ways in which they and their teams leaned into this framing. And here's what they said. For me, it was a matter of knowing that there was no textbook for this situation. There was no place that I could go and reference to be able to say, those that have had pandemics, how did you do what you did? Because my understanding is the last one was a Spanish flu and it hadn't been for 100 years and school's definitely different now. And so for me, a part of it was, I think about the situational leader. And I said, that would be the style that I would say that I was definitely leaning on. And for me, as a situational leader, it's based on the situation at hand, based on the information that I've been provided, how do I go about making the best decisions for the school district? I thought about one, you know, what was the purpose for us being here? And that, of course, is to ensure that we have an education. In addition to the purpose for us being here, I also think about the safety. Because at the end of the day, the goal is try to make sure that all of our faculty and staff are safe. None of us knew what we were doing in the spring. Sometimes I still don't feel like I know what I'm doing, so I'm unafraid to ask questions, ask for help. We spend a lot of time talking about the different things that we have to decide. And also we talk a lot about order of operations, like who needs to know what, when, and also making sure that we involve people. For example, we have to begin testing after the new year. And today we met with nurses and we said to our school nurses, here's what we're thinking, but we really are not the experts. So this is your chance to poke holes in our plan, tell us what we could do better, what changes do you need to see? And so very much sharing that thinking and then every time someone adds to your thought, it gets a little bit better, hopefully. The acknowledgement of novelty and framing as a learning problem may seem obvious from our viewpoint, but many leaders were unable to shift into the vulnerability that this requires. By leaning into this vulnerability, Dr. Young and Ms. Moritz's districts were able to proactively problem solve. The related benefit to this framing is that teams come to understand that they will have to think creatively, and it sets the stage for embracing risk and learning from mistakes. As a leader, you just have to take ownership for it and just know that you know things are going to happen mistakes are going to happen but the goal is to not make the same mistake over and over again and I think that's where the difference between being a risk taker is and not a risk taker risk takers are always going to have challenges where you may you may jump out and in jumping out you may fall but it's in the learning of it that you are able to quickly reassess what you need to do and now move forward so that you're able to make the greater gain. So I think getting feedback from colleagues, like 
even though I've been doing this for 21 years, if I have a key email or communication I'm sending out, I have a couple of other administrators who I send it to and I say, I want you to take a look at this. What I really want to know is what's the message that's coming through to you? And I think always, no matter how long we've been doing it or how good we get, we ask for that feedback from colleagues. We make sure we're sending it out in every imaginable way that we can. Districts that were able to communicate the importance of leveraging the moment and leaning into quick reflection cycles had a better chance of engaging parents, teachers, and students in finding ways to problem solve and keep education moving forward. Those that did not found themselves trying to achieve their goals using systems and processes that served different circumstances. And many lost students to homeschooling pods, state or virtual academies, or private charter or parochial schools. With the appropriate practices and mindsets in place, districts were able to keep the work of educating students moving forward. And we spoke with Dr. Patrick Ward, the Director of Curriculum and Instruction in Mayfield City Schools in Ohio, and Jim Roberts, the Superintendent at Bartholomew Consolidated School Corporation in Indiana, about the ways that they were able to balance the urgent and the important on their teams to keep the work moving forward. There's this kind of interesting tension between crisis leadership, which it's never been a chronic condition for school system. You know, typically crisis comes, you respond to it, and then you can get back to building relationships and the emotional support that humans need through this work. So you've had to balance those two. You've had to balance you know, decisive decision-making at times with also meeting the needs of the emotional demand that this time and our work always requires. So that's been the interesting thing is we've accelerated that relationship building, flexibility, and willingness to validate emotion but continue to stay focused on facts and outcomes has been so important. It is extremely important to understand understand our why and, and why do we exist as an organization. In our case, we're here for kids. We weren't developed as an organization as a place to employ adults. We were developed as an organization as a place to educate children. And then once we as a group can make sure we get that piece, then it is what do we hope to accomplish with our children? What big, hairy, audacious goal can we, uh, the BHAG, if that uh, acronym that's out there, yeah. can, can we accomplish with everything we have as we work for kids? This is how big, we are, are trying to be any school corporation actually achieving 100% graduation is going to be very proud. But at the end of it, it is not just graduating, but have we provided them with the skills, the knowledge, the expertise, the ability to go out into this world and be successful. So you can see that by planning for change, not perfection, the district leaders and their teams were able to find a calm, optimistic approach to problems in 2020. In our next video, we will be exploring how responsive leaders were able to build trust and allow authority to spread. Thank you so much for watching. For more content from Education Elements, be sure to check out our website and follow us on Twitter. Check out the description for all of these links and more. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.